Tomo Aizawa and Junichiru, Jun, Kubota are the tightest bros you would ever see. They roughhouse and spar, but through thick and thin, they have got each other's back. Yet, there is just one small problem, Tomo is in love with Jun. Since she was young, tomboyish Tomo has been just another one of the guys, due to his extreme muscle-brained nature, Jun does not notice any of her advances, not even when she explicitly confesses. To add insult to injury, for the longest time, he did not even realize that she was a girl. Will Tomo ever be able to catch Jun's eye and escape the infamous bro zone? Let's start the anime. Tomu Chan is a girl episode, one spoiler ahead, watch out and take care after entering high school Tomo confesses. Her love for Jun her childhood friend Jun, who thinks Tomo is a boy doesn't understand her confession of love and responds with. I love you too buddy disappointed at the result. Tomo complains about being treated as a boy and not as a girl, Tomo and Jun have been living together as neighbors since childhood. They would play with each other and hang out together. However, while growing up, they went to different elementary schools, but in middle school, when he met her again Jun, began to believe that Tomo was a boy, and this was the first time she got the treatment of a boy while going to high school Jun, smacked Tomo's. But without thinking a bit about her embarrassment and frustration, Tomo hits him with the elbow in the ribs. Also stated she knows, karate to arriving at her classroom, Tomo seeks help from her best friend, Gundo Gundo, who recalls that she only plays games that boys play in fights with kids from other schools, even in kindergarten. Whenever Gundo asked her to play house or dolls with her, she rejected her every time. So at this point, she might well become a real boy while asking for help again Gundo states Tomo has many problems, one of which is the way she talks. Gundo tells her to try softening her tone a bit and being more polite and less blunt after listening to her advice, Tomo begins to talk louder and Jun states that she's talking like an old man angry at his remarks Tomo asks what his problem is and decides to settle this issue with a fight when Jun grabs her collar her girly things, flash out embarrassed, Tomo asks for a timeout, but Jun doesn't listen and they both begin. Their fight arrives at home, and Tomo's father asks what happened to her face. She replies that she had a fight with Jun, which she lost. Her father calls her a wasp to the Izawa style and they both begin to argue, while Tomo's mother enjoys their argument while cooking for them the next morning Jun asked for forgiveness, and she also hit her with a punch too not responding. A bit Jun begins to tease her while touching her waist, but gets punched in the face Jun states he already apologized many times so don't be mad. Life is boring when she's not around, and he can't stand having her ignore him for another. Second, recalling his words, Tomo states he's always like this, the day they fight but tells him. She won't ignore him back to buddies again, they gave each other a fist pump and went to high school on the rooftop. Gundo asks Tomo, why does she and Jun always come to school together, hang out throughout the school together, and then why she spends her lunch break with her Tomo replies that when a girl and a boy go to law together, they feel like they are dating and she does not want to feel that way, angry at her statement, Gundo runs away, saying she needs to eat with Jun, while eating besides Jun Tomo reveals the reason behind not eating with the trio is that this two hate, each other's guts while eating her fried chicken Jun asks for one which she happily gives him, but she gets embarrassed when Jun holds her hand while eating the fried chicken with her chopsticks in the middle of the school. A guy named Tana Bay arrives and asks Jun, how far he's gotten with Tomo stating the intense thing, sports, guys, and girls do together thinking as a karate practice, they usually do at her home Jun tells Tanabe they have been doing this, since they were kids to his surprise, Tana Bay states. There is no doubt she has an amazing body, Thinking of her flying kicks Jun replies that Tomo's got good feet and is good at using them too, to his surprise, Gundo, who is listening to all this immediately, immediately heads to Tomo and tells her everything infuriated at his words Tomo beats the hell out of Jun later Gundo stops Tanabe telling him Jun and Tomo are not dating and Jun, doesn't even see Tomo as a girl. Tanabe thinks their relationship is interesting, and how can he give them a push? Angry Gundo states, she's known them since childhood and she's the only one who's allowed to play with them later that day, it starts raining heavily Gundo and Jun recall they did not bring an umbrella to meeting with each other. Gundo recalls how she and Tomo used to play together, but now Jun hates her without reason. Jun states, she always came up with extreme pranks, but whenever the grown-ups yelled at them, she was nowhere to be found and would always run away to instill insecurity. Gundo asks himself how he would feel if Tomo were to get a boyfriend and leaves Jun for him. This leads to Jun pushing her towards the hall and into the rain. Suddenly Tomo arrives with an umbrella instead of Jun. Tomo asks Gundo to go with her under her umbrella, but she declines and makes her go with Jun as they are walking back home.
Tomo tries to stand a little away from Jun and ends up getting wet when Jun asks why she is staying away from him. Tomo recalls that she came from the bathroom and smells sweaty Jun sniffs her and recalls that she's smelling kind of nice and embarrassed at this Tomo leaves Jun and runs away into the rain. Arriving at Tomo's location, Jun's eyes fall on her wet clothes and he ends up noticing Tomo's bra and immediately runs away at the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Karate Club Tomo is sparring with his teammate Masaki Masaki recalls how she's amazing sharp light on her feet and stronger than anyone else in the Karate Club after getting knocked out Tomo apologizes to him, but Masaki appears to not mind at all. He asks why she joined the boys club, to which Tomo replies that all the other students in her family's dojo are guys so she's used to it. But in her first match in the girls club, she's gotten carried away and ends up knocked out. Most of the new students she also states. She joined the girls club for a change of surroundings, but before she knew it, she was surrounded by guys again and believed she was a failure. As a girl, however, Masaki says she's a very charming girl feeling happy in Tomo state. This is the first time a guy has acknowledged her as a girl. She asked Misake what seemed girly about her Misaki states. She has all kinds of charms but needs to emphasize one thing. She is plenty charming just the way she is and has more confidence in herself outside of the boys. In Karate Club two girls stop Tomo and Misaki as they talk to each other at the school Gundo confronts Jun, revealing that Tomo has a guy friend in the Karate Club jealous Jun, touches her hair and throws her ponytail Jun asks Tomo about a friend in the karate club and Tomo states that his name is Masaki and that he is the club captain showing his picture to Jun, but Jun thinks he's. A girl Jun asks Tomo how she would feel if Gundo got a boyfriend and stopped talking to her Tomo states. Gundo, wouldn't do that ever and if she does she'll be a little lonely while drinking a soda Tomo is confronted by two girls from class B, who have previously been stalking her and Masaki outside the boys karate club. They introduce themselves as Mifun and Agua respectively and ask Tomo to meet them after school. Behind the gym, Tolo sees this as a threat and tries to intimidate the two by inquiring about what they are up to and even destroying a soda can to threaten them. The trick appears to work really well, as the duo asks their classmates about Tomo. One of the girls explains that she was matched up with her in the karate club and that her strength is not human. She also states Tomo moved to the boys club and still hasn't lost a match. Yet fighting with Tomo means a cruel death hearing about Tomo the others, get frightened as well in Agawa states. They need to apologize to her before she can kill them. Tomo tells Gundo about Class B's girls and opens up about her plan to fight the two of them. Gundo calmly reminds her that this is not how high school girls communicate but dissuades her friends from fighting and instead asks her to tell her if they cross the line. She also tells her that she will crush them if they say anything too out of line. Socially later, Tomo meets Mifun and Agua behind the gym. The two are terrified of her as they see Tomo Gary ready for a fight. They both somehow gather some courage and tell her that they like Masaki, and they saw her talking with him outside the boys. Karate Club Tomo completely misunderstood the situation and thinks they only come to her because they need her love advice. She recalls that she never thought her dream of giving someone love advice would come true. She tells them that if they want to get closer to Masaki, the first thing they should do is be her friends feeling reassured Tomo tells Gundo. She feels like one of the girls now though suddenly June arrives, grabs her from behind, and leaves the classroom, and this brings the anime to an end comment for the part. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss out on another video until next time take care.